I've put together a tier list of the UNSC weapons in Halo Infinite, so without wasting any time, let's get right down to business. We're gonna start with F tier. There's only one piece of trash in this category. That's right, it's the S7 sniper. I saw a Mint Blitz video the other day pinpointing exactly why this sniper rifle is complete dog shit. Seriously, his video is worth a watch and a link will be in the description for it if you're interested. There's nothing in C tier because I genuinely believe that 343 did a great job with Halo Infinite Sandbox for the most part, except for that goddamn sandbox. There's only one weapon in B tier and it's the Hydra. I don't have too much to say about it either way, other than the fact that it can easily kill enemies with the lock-on function or up close without the lock-on function. If your enemy runs behind cover when targeted, the Hydra's missiles will curve a little bit around the piece of cover they're at. Not much, but they will a little bit. The weapon outputs some pretty good damage. I think it's a fairly decent mid-tier weapon like the Shotgun, Heat Wave, and Mangler, but it's nothing to write home about. It's just kind of there in the sandbox, and I think the Reach Grenade Launcher would have been a much better weapon to fill the Hydra's role. Anyway, decent weapon, decent damage, B tier. Alright, now we're in A tier. There are currently 8 UNSC weapons in the game, and yes, 6 out of 8 of them ended up in A or higher. Seriously, the gunplay in this game is really good, hats off to 343. At the bottom of A tier, we have the VK-78 Commando. Now, I know this one is controversial. You can ask a hundred different players about this weapon, and I bet opinions will vary on it wildly. Some think the Commando is F-tier trash. Seriously, just throw it in the trash. What the fuck are you doing with that thing? It's terrible. Stupid side. Some will say it's amazing. Others will be closer to the middle of the road. I think this weapon is misunderstood by a vast number of players that think it's just not very good. But I'm here to say that this thing is strong if you can aim and control the recoil. The key is knowing when to tap fire and when to full auto spray at an enemy. If you start practicing with it, you might find it very rewarding the better your skill becomes with it. I myself think it's a poor replacement for the DMR, and if that's what they were going with with this weapon, I think they missed the mark. But overall, it's solid by itself. Also, having both the Commando and DMR would be awesome. Please, 343, add the fucking DMR already. In second place, we have the Bulldog Shotgun. A lot of players, including myself, were a bit upset with this one. You see, since 343 took over Halo in 2011, they never functionally changed the classic buckshot weapon, only cosmetically. But with Infinite, we have a replacement that functions differently. It has a 7 round capacity, and what the shotgun lacks in damage output, it more than makes up for in effective range. It's a 3 shot kill if you accurately land your shots, however one trigger pull and one melee will also net you the kill. I'll say this, just like I did with the Commando and DMR, I'd like to see the classic shotgun return alongside the Bulldog. They're both great weapons in their own right, and I think having the option to use both would be awesome. The champ of A tier is obviously the Spanker. You could easily make a case that it belongs in S tier because, well, it's a fucking rocket launcher and get the fuck out of here. High damage, great range, 11 out of 10 solid death machine. The only reason I put it in A tier is because it takes little skill to use effectively. It's just 343's point and click adventure, and that's not a bad thing at all. This weapon is exactly what it needs to be. This weapon really did some damage! Third place in S tier, we have the MK50 Sidekick. This weapon and the other two in S tier have nearly perfect balance and fill their respective roles absolutely. It has a good rate of fire and sports a 12 round magazine. Seven shots to the head or 10 to the body and your opponent is down. Overall, one of the best pistols in the series, hands down. Halo Infinite's pistol is a very high damage output weapon and it's the definition of big things that come in small packages. The MK50 has secured its spot in S tier. It deserves it. Runner up in this list is the Assault Rifle. I can say nothing but good things about this weapon. For the first time, the AR is a decent pick in PvP due to its greatly increased range this time around. Compare this Assault Rifle to past installments and you'll see the most versatile and best version of this weapon since it debuted in 2001. In Infinite, the MA40 possesses a 36 round magazine much like its Halo 5 counterpart. I feel as if 343 realized this weapon was never really viable throughout the last 10 years before they inherited the franchise, and every game that 343 has made so far, it only continues to improve. Seriously, Halo 4 and Halo 5's ARs both slap. I feel like with Infinite, they found a perfect balance for this weapon now, something I feel Bungie was never able to do with this gun as far as PvP is concerned. Overall, I think 343 did an excellent job, and I think they've damn near perfected the Halo Assault Rifle. Hats off to you, 343. You did a good job on this. And of course, the top dog of this tier list is undoubtedly the BR. I'm pretty sure most of you saw this coming. 
The BR-75 in Infinite is an absolute powerhouse and a pinnacle of this weapon's evolution, just like the AR. Since Bungie introduced the weapon in Halo 2, it's been the go-to competitive weapon until Halo's comp scene was ruined with Reach. With Halo Infinite, 343 Industries has seemed to fix a plague that this weapon used to always drag with it. In Halo 2 and 3 especially, the BR was way too good. A really good player can decimate an entire lobby and nothing flat with the BR alone in these games, since most other weapons in the sandbox were tuned for campaign. Trying to use them against a skilled opponent with a BR is like pissing into the wind while standing on top of a fucking anthill. However, Halo Infinite's well-balanced sandbox allows the BR-75 to excel in its role without being an oppressive force to deal with constantly. Anyway, here's the full list. Do you agree with it or would you have made it differently? Let's start a discussion about it in the comments below. I'd like to hear what you all have to say about it. As always, you're all triple OGs for staying till the end, and I appreciate it. That's what I appreciate about you. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.